I was looking at my desk the other day, but got bored, so thought I'd look to the stars and think about how we are nothing but specks in this cosmic infinity, floating carelessly through the void in perpetual motion until the sun- Wait, is that Mario? Welcome back to Midnight Hobbies, and today I'll be blasting away from the spooky and into space as I attempt to make Starship Mario from Super Mario Galaxy 2. And to start this build, we're gonna need some bowls. After capturing a King Boo, I paired it with one of its children to act as Mario's nose, but it didn't have that beautiful oval curve I was after, so after some carefully placed pressure on the styrofoam, I was left with the perfect shape. I then trimmed off the back side, I think I need to clean my knife, and once it was removed, inserted some glued wire so that my TV could finally get a signal. Hey, paisanos! Then with a lot of PVA, I stuck it onto the face, leaving me with a very poorly proportioned snowman. And now with the nose as a reference point, I began to sketch out the rest of the detail so that I could assure I wouldn't mess up my proportions. I then finalised the sketches with a fine liner to minimise any confusion. And now for that flat top. Thanks to my training at the Dr. Mario School of Medicine, I know the best tool for skull removal is a dangerously sharp metal ruler. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. My logic was that the ruler would keep a clean cut across, but not only did it hurt my fingies, it also made me feel slightly sadistic. With the skull removed and styrofoam everywhere, I needed to stop the brains from leaking out, so a bit of pressure was applied to squish them into place and to keep the top flat. And now it's time to make a hat. To build the cap's brim, I peeled the skin off a sheet of foam board and traced perfect circles onto it. Perfect. It was then cut out with an F initialed on the front end for Fario, and once I was happy with its size, I cut out two more and layered them with glue for a delicious cake. Now that it had some thickness, I cleaned up the edges with my hobby knife and textured the top with a crumpled up ball of foil. Using a pencil, I sketched in the edges of the stone and then glued it in place. Hey. But then I was faced with what I hadn't thought out. How was I going to make the rest of the cap? Plan A was to use another styrofoam bowl, but not only did I actually slice my fingers open with the ruler this time, it wasn't the right shape either. So it was time for the great outdoors. Using this not so great XPS foam, I sliced and diced out a piece that could fit snugly into place around the brim. I then glued another two more pieces on top so that I could spend way too much time carving out the perfect helmet that would make Lance Armstrong jealous. It was then bulked with a bit of foil so that I could get those nice weighted folds over the side, and then back inside to use a fine liner again to mark out Mario's glorious sideburns. At least I hope that's what they are. His ears and healthy hairline were also fine lined out, and then I moved on to giving him some more dimensional features. Looking at reference images, it's pretty clear to see from Mario's eyes that he's stoned, so stones were carved out of more XPS foam alongside his ears and eyebrows. Another styrofoam bowl was sliced by not a ruler, glued onto the front of the cap and left to set so that Mario could catch some Z's. I'm a tiger. <laughs> Wait a minute, this isn't a plunger. It's a base. <laughs> Moving on to the rest of the face, I used some soft foam to make a smashing moustache and sideburns that was glued into place and held down with some matte pins. A larger piece of foam was used for the back of his luscious locks, and once the glue had dried, I removed all the pins. Now it was time to impale this poor plumber on his plunger and get plastered. Here we go! The plaster is used to not only give it all a protective shell that's easier to paint, but also to help fill any gaps I missed and to unite it all as one piece, even though it still cracks. Anyway, now on to the main deck, which we'll be using... Packaging cardboard. Starting with a classic bit of Kleenex, I marked out the length I was after. I then sketched out the floor plan of the platform, but oh, come on, bigger than that. There we go. Then after I cut it out and was happy with its size, I went and snipped an arrangement of circles to glue over the base to give it some depth. 
Then using some strips of shapes, I built up the walls beneath the platform. And thanks to my rocky surface, it couldn't sit flat on the head, but this was expected, so a little snip of some edges made all things right. Made all things right. Eh, it all get covered with clay anyway. But speaking of disappointments, let's take a look at the saga of failed handrails. Packaging cardboard? <coughs> Wire? <coughs> stick? <coughs> Small cardboard? <coughs> Foam and stick? <coughs> Until I finally found that packaging cardboard as one piece was the answer all along. Who could have known? The platform was then traced onto the head so that I could start sketching out the footpaths and river of water. Now, to traverse the gap between sideburn and path, as you do, we'll need some foam sheet cut and lay it into stairs. And once stuck in place, it was time for some texture. I don't like sand. To keep my carpet happy, I moved back outside where I applied layers of glue followed by generous helpings of everyone's favourite coarse and rough snack. Any spot I happened to miss, I'd touch over with more glue and even more sand. Then when all the skin was coated, I left him out to catch a well-needed tan. And after catching a nice bronze, it was time for everyone's favourite mascot. After mixing some white Mod Podge to be even whiter, I lathered it onto the whole piece to seal in that Italian flavour. Let's -a go! The ship platform was then stuck into place, and then it was time for me to clean up all of those mistakes. I rolled out some fettuccine strips of air dry clay and began to apply it around the edges of the platform to blend it into the ground. I then used my hobby knife to remove any excess and the inner tube of a pen to poke a decorative trim around the edge. Little pre-cut cardboard doorways were then pushed into place and I went round with a coarse brush to hopefully jab a bit of texture into it all. It didn't really work. Oh wait, doesn't this thing also have a chimney? More cardboard packaging rolled into a rigatoni and glued onto an off-cut of foam board should suffice. It then received a clay coating and textured to look oh, no, 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 no. textured to look like brick and stone, to the best of my abilities. More fettuccine for the footpath with an overload of pen jabs to look like cobblestones, and then another sprinkling of sand to give the change of ground some texture. Then a coating of Mod Podge to protect it from all of that wonderful painting I'm sure I'm gonna do. And speaking of painting, it's a uh, Time to paint. And to start it off, a zesty mix of yellow for all of those sandy surfaces. A light raw sienna was used for the stone trim and doorways, and then a creamy fawn for the rest of the stone. This phase of the painting is mildly redundant as I ended up changing half of the colours of the platform, but at least we can all laugh about it now. Then I got too excited and started dry brushing the sand with a very light yellow to help the edges pop, and then remembered I had the rest of the base colours to do, so I started giving the bricks an aggressive red, followed by some chosen coverings of pink for variation. A swampy green was given to the hat to underlay the grass I would apply later, and okay, looking good so far, what's next? A light green was given to all the quote-unquote hairy parts, since Mario practices horrible hygiene, but mostly they help give the illusion later on that the grass between the hat and the hair is different. Some green highlights were also given to the platform, and then just because I've got a horrible addiction to dry brushing, I used what I had left of the light green to dry brush the top. All of the dry brushing on the green is truly pointless, since it's going to be smothered with grass and greenery anyway. The little river got a streaky blue, which then got doused in many layers of gloss Mod Podge tinted blue. I tried to purposely keep it a little bumpy and streaky so that it could give the impression of moving water. A bit of grey for those stoned eyes and visor, followed by lighter layers of dry brushing to help all those little details pop. Mmm, dry brushing. Oh, whilst we're here, some white dry brushing was applied to the sand and stone surfaces, as well as some pointless brown in all the light green areas, because why not? The railing got some simple metallic silver, and then from two round pieces of foam sheet and leftover packaging, I made the little window thingies on the front, with a glaze of gloss on top to make them shine. And after whipping up my own black hole of paint and water, I weathered all of the stone edges and dabbed away the excess with some paper towel. The water received some feather-light brushes of white to accentuate the ripples, and now you're probably thinking this looks borderline garbage in terms of palette, but don't worry, it'll all be fixed with the big guns. Whoa! 
Starting with some 2mm medium green in my static grass applicator, I gave Mario a milk stash before completely covering it with some green goodness. This was then applied to all of the light green areas, shaking off the excess as I go to repurpose for later. And because I didn't think it was dark enough, the cap got a touch over with some muddy brown before I hit it all away with some 4mm grass. The platform and footpath finally received its less insulting repaint, and then I moved on to using some Woodland Scenics clump foliage to build up the little hedges next to the footpaths. Additional bushes were added to the platform and other areas, as well as some sprinkling of more 2mm to build up the greenery, which I then followed with little whispers of paint to trick the eyes into seeing flowers. A cheeky technique I learned from the always inimitable Studson Studios. For some more variation, I watered down some red paint and tinted some of the foliage to a pinky red, doing the same with some white as well. Once dried, I was left with these beautiful little nuggets that I then planted around the cap. Extra details I made off camera, such as this little bridge out of cardboard, this sign out of crafting sticks, tree stumps out of foam, and stones from XPS offcuts, were then stuck into place to decorate the back of the head. For a tree, I'm using this mini tree to trim and glue into an even smaller tree that then got covered in some more clump foliage, leaving me with this little green popsicle that I really want to take a bite out of. To steer this ship, this LEGO steering wheel should suffice, which then got a new stand and paint job before being glued into place. Please let me know in the comments if this is considered a LEGO war crime. Some leftover greenery was stuck around the place in natural areas, and then it was onto the final piece of this puzzle. Using a small piece of foam board, I sketched out that signature M. And fun fact, contrary to popular belief, the M on Mario's cap stands for Mamma Mia! True fact, no need to look it up, I'm a guy on the internet, you can trust me. It then got a red base, followed by some silver details and a dry brushing before sticking it into place to let this thing finally take flight. Thanks for watching everyone. I thoroughly enjoyed this build as it was definitely the most challenging piece I've ever faced, but I think it turned out not too shabby, so I hope you enjoyed it too. Take care everyone, and I'll see you at the next video.